Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about why I hate strong female characters. So this is a video that I've been kind of wanting to do for a while and um, I just hadn't gotten around to it and then International Women's Day came around and I was like, what a fitting slash perverse time to do it. I don't know what else to film today, so let's do that. I'm in a very weird mood today, which is like a terrible idea to be filming this today, but I'm doing it. So just so you know, the fuck it in me today is very strong. So that's kind of where we're at today. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I li I have been thinking about filming this video since last year. Um, like, and I mean, like since December of last year. So it's been like three months. Is it March? Four months ish? Something like that. Something like that. And um, I am aware of how clickbaity the name of this video is. And that's half the reason I haven't done it because like there's something in me that's like extremely contrary. And like, I know like having a catchy video title is something that like I should have, like I should try to think of ways to make my video titles catchy. And yet every time I do, I'm just like, mm, I don't like that. I should have more boring titles. Like I'm asking people to watch this. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't want to be successful, I think, is what it is. Anyway, all of that is an aside. Um, so, why do I hate strong female characters? So, in reality, what I hate is the term strong female character. And then a lot of things that go with that term, like how that term came to be and like how it's used, but that's what I hate. I don't actually hate, like, <laughs> strong female characters. Okay, I do. There are some cliches associated with it that we'll get into that I hate. I'm all for having interesting female characters in books, as you guys well know. And I am a total hypocrite. So if you're going to at me in the comments, be like, you say strong female characters are great and like pull up a like clip of me doing it in a previous video. I probably said it a million times. I'm a product of the, uh, the culture and the machine that invented this term. So I'm sure I've used it more than once. Okay, but so why do I hate that term? Well, in the first place, um, usually it's used, like when, when that comes up is usually because someone's like holding up a book and is saying, if you love strong female characters, then you should read this. Or things I love about this book are the strong female characters in it. And of course, part of me, less woke me, was like, yeah, strong female characters. We like that. But woke me is thinking, have you ever heard someone say, read this book if you love strong male characters? They don't. You've never heard someone say, what do I love about this book? I love how strong the male characters are. That's not a thing. And so part of me, like, would, that struggles and wars with the whole notion of like affirmative action style things where I'm like, like, I get what it's trying to do, but I'm, I'm looking at it and going, is this the most like logical way to achieve it. And I don't have an answer to that question. I really don't. Oh, it's one of those days where there's like clouds and stuff sometimes. Cool. Well, the lighting in this video is going to be excellent. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying affirmative action is or isn't the solution, but I do, when I look at stuff like that, I'm like, I know what it's trying to do. And then is this the best tool for that? Is that going to achieve this goal? And I don't have an answer to that. But similarly, for strong female characters, I'm all for pushing the idea that we should have more representation of women, of people of color, of all those kinds of things. But when we start talking about strong female characters, there is usually, A, I object to that term being used for the reason that I just cited, because that's not a thing, like, for dudes. <laughs> you just have interesting characters. It's not like, oh, wow, like, let me see, let me put it this way. Maybe this will make more sense. Um, the fact that you have to say it means that it's sort of the exception rather than the rule. So you're like, pick this book up because unlike everything else, the women in this are three dimensional. The women in this have personalities and we like that about it. I mean, that's like a restaurant review saying, go here because the food is good in this place. Well, I guess restaurant reviews do they do say that. So let's not use that as an example. You know what I mean? Where I'm just like, they just should be that way. So to go out of your way to praise it for the fact that it the female characters in it didn't suck, I don't think that 
Like part of me wants to praise that because I want to see more of it. But you know what I mean? Like I object to that being praiseworthy. Like that just should be. It's right up there with when um there's like, I'm sure if you're a girl, you've probably experienced frustration with this, where there are things that you've been expected to just do and say and take care of and handle. And then if a guy does a fraction of that, all of a sudden he's like a hero. So if you help clear the table, you're like, well, you're just supposed to. But if a dude does it, they're like, oh, what a great guy. And you're like, is he though? Like, shouldn't people just do that? Shouldn't they just help out? Do we, why are we praising that? We should just expect it. So I guess that's what I'm saying. I'm saying by, by praising strong female characters, we seem to be saying that that to have that is going above and beyond and good job. It shouldn't be going above and beyond. That should just be the norm. So it's more negative. But part of me is like, let's not praise strong female characters. Let's deride people who don't have strong female characters. And let's stop using the term strong female characters. Because literally, like, what the fuck does that even mean? What the fuck is a strong female character? Do you mean she actually has a personality? Do you mean that she's physically strong? Like, she can lift a lot of weights? Do you mean that when... When people talk to her, she's argumentative. Do you mean that she says no a lot? Do you mean that she has the strength to say yes? Like, what the fuck is a strong female character? Like, do you know what I mean? I mean, you can't answer me, but do you know what I mean? Like, it's when I start piece, like when you start taking it apart, it gets, makes me really, really angry. So on the one hand, I like books. I tend to like books that get that label. I tend to like books that have like that associated with it where people say, this has strong female characters in it. And when I see that, like, I have this sideline, like, monologue in my head, which you guys are getting right now. But when I see that label, I'm like, well, it's probably a book that I'm going to like, because I do know what they're saying. But at the same time, every time I see it, I'm like, I wish they wouldn't say it like that, because... So, um, let's unpack this a little bit, because, I don't know, I'm here to talk, and uh, I have a lot to say. So, if you already disagree with everything that I'm saying... I don't know. Come at me in the comments down below. I don't care. Um, But yeah, so like I listed a bunch of things there, like when in like sort of like rant style being like, what the fuck does that mean? Um, Also, I'm sorry if you have children in the room while you watch my videos, but they've probably heard that word before. We live in a rough world. I'm a strong female character, so I say what I want. This has become uh, um, something that's discussed more. And like one of the first times that I experienced this discussion, like this topic, was actually to do with the show Mad Men. You didn't see that coming, did you? And I found it fascinating that um, the representation, if you don't know what Mad Men is, because that's not exactly on brand for me, (laughs) Mad Men is a AMC show that's not on the air anymore that was about Madison Avenue ad agency in the 60s. I think it starts either late 50s or early 60s and kind of goes through the 60s and all of the craziness that is the 60s. So there are two, two of the main female characters that are, like, throughout the entire show. Because there's other female characters in it. But two of, like, the main ones are Peggy and Joan. And I found it fascinating how polarizing those characters are. Because I watch the show, and I have people that I know that are my age, or near my age, that watch the show. And I also know people my parents' age, or people who, like, live through that era, who watch the show. And the people who are of, like, my parents' generation watch it, And they like Peggy. They think that she's a strong female character. They think that she's, you know, a ball buster. And that's so fantastic. People of my generation, and obviously I'm like, this is huge, broad strokes. There's, I'm sure there's people who are, you know, the reverse of what I'm saying. But this has been my experience. The people of my age group prefer Joan. That's not to say they don't like Peggy. And that's not to say people of my parents' generation don't like Joan. But that my generation views Joan as a strong female character. And I think that's fascinating. Now, if you've never seen Mad Men, you're probably like, okay, who the fuck are Joan and Peggy? And why do I care? Um, Basically, Peggy is your sort of poster child for like a feminist character. Where she like enters the ad agency as like a typist or a secretary or something. And she's like wearing little dresses and having little sandwiches and being like a girl. And then she gets like, you know, feminist and woke and starts wearing pants and starts being like, I want to be like one of the guys. And like, I can do what a man can do and like you should treat me the same and like being very like combative and being very confrontational and that's kind of her MO to like utterly simplify a complicated character 
that's kind of what Peggy is like. Whereas Joan is extremely feminine and very much embraces her femininity and uses it to her advantage. Joan is a very curvaceous woman and she uses that as, a, instead of trying to cover it up, instead of trying to dress more like a man, she dresses even more in a way that emphasizes her feminine curves and then uses that to her advantage. <laughs> so when people of my generation watched that, we seemed, the consensus seemed to be, or at least that's how I felt about it and that's what I felt like other people who agreed that Joan was their favorite were getting out of it, was that Joan was embracing what it is to be a woman and not viewing femininity as, um, as weakness. So you didn't have to be a man to be strong. Like there's a, there's a feminine version of strength. So then we looked at Peggy and we're like, don't be a dude, be yourself and be strong. And so we look at Joan and go, you're being yourself. You're not trying to be something you're not and you're being strong. And we respect the hell out of that. Now there's a place for both, obviously. Oh, I had to interrupt myself to deal with my camera. What was I saying? Oh, there's a place for both. Um, like I personally am... Even though Joan was kind of my hero and I prefer Joan um, to Peggy, I'm probably more like Peggy because I've never, I don't want to say never, but I'm not one that is emphasizing my femininity very much. I do the opposite. But um, it's, <laughs> there's a difference to me if you're doing it on purpose or you just are that way, if that makes sense. So like, if you're a tomboy, that's great. Don't be a tomboy. Don't make yourself a tomboy because you think that that would be better, if that makes sense. If you're naturally inclined to do more athletic things, or you're naturally inclined to be interested in things that have more typically been associated with men, that's totally fine. But the thing that Peggy was doing was trying to be masculine because she thought that that would be, that would give her strength and that would give her power because to make it in a man's world, you have to be a man. So she's making herself into a man. And so this is kind of the issue that we get with strong female characters. Because, and this is changing, which is great. But for a long time, it seems like when you had a strong female character, you basically just had a dude, but then you put boobs on them or a dress. But basically people were writing male characters and then just like making them women and saying, oh, this is what a strong female character. But She's not, you know what I mean? And that's not to say that you can't have characters that are more masculine in their behavior, and that's totally fine. But the sense was, in order for the character to be strong, she had to be dude-like, and then she would be a strong female character, which I object to. And that's why I think I object to the, the very phrase strong female character, I think, is absurd. Because it's not, by emphasizing strength, that's already an extremely masculine thing to be emphasizing because that goes hand in hand with ideas about macho and testosterone and like all this kind of thing. And the fact that power is ultimately associated with strength, that power is associated with physical size, with violence, with things like that. As you know, if you watch my channel, I love stabby books. I love violence and a lot of things that go hand in hand with exactly that picture. But that just happens to be my taste. I object to the idea that the only form of strength would be that. And I don't. That's that's not true. And I don't, I don't like it when I read it. It's very two-dimensional, frankly. So I do try, especially now that I'm more aware of this as an issue and as something that I myself am pissed off about, to use other words. Like it has very, I'm sure I say strong female character a lot because that is the word that's used. Um, but I do try to think of other ways to say it. So like having interesting female characters, having three-dimensional female characters, having complex female characters, having just uh, having uh, characters with like very gray morals or having interesting representations of femininity, like stuff like that. That to me is more important because whether or not a female character is strong is irrelevant. If you mean she's strong because the character is well-written, then say that. Say that it has very well-written characters, and then also say that many of those characters are female. Because it's not as though I want a book where the male characters are badly written. I want to read a book where the characters are well-written. And ideally, we would have a little bit more women in there than we have traditionally seen, especially in certain genres. Like, looking at you, Tolkien. <laughs> where, where, Where's the ladies? So I understand where this comes from. And the kind of thing that's trying to achieve, and the kind of people using this phrase, are generally 
coming from a, a place that I support, then I think that's the wrong way to go about it. And it makes me angry. And I think it creates a different problem because we want representations of women. That, that doesn't mean that they have to be ball busters. That doesn't mean that they have to be physically strong. That doesn't mean they have to be warriors. You can have a story about a woman who's quintessentially feminine and she'll be a strong female character because she's well-written. But people won't typically... I, I, I don't think people usually use the phrase strong female character to describe a woman who is very quintessent, who is very stereotypically feminine. Because, ah, oh, you know, she's... That's weak. It's not weak. I mean, it might be weak. <laughs> she might be badly written and she might be a weak character. But just because you're not hostile or confrontational or violent or masculine or physically strong, that doesn't mean you're a... You, that doesn't mean you're not a strong female character. So I object to it being in... in put in such polarizing terms, if that makes sense. Because again, you wouldn't say, I love how strong these male characters are. And you wouldn't then, by contrast, pull up a book and say, oh, you know what I love about this book is how weak the male characters are. Like you wouldn't. Because that is the dichotomy that you create when you say strong female character. Does that mean that the other ones are weak? That's not the issue here, I don't think. And I don't. if it is the issue, then it shouldn't be. We want to see female characters prominently featured and and uh, represented in a way that's layered and complex. And that, all of that is not built into the word strong, as far as I'm concerned. So if the word strong is meant to suggest, um, because I've heard the word strong, I suppose, used when people say like, she's got strong talent or something like that. But most typically when people hear the word strong, they think strong. I mean, when people say you have a strong voice, they usually mean you're loud. They don't mean you sound good, <laughs> if that makes sense. So don't call it strong. I think I think I'm making sense. Um, and like, so I kind of also wanted to go into why like this in particular makes me angry because I do, I do, do, do. <laughs> I really like um, representations of women that are ball busters for sure. That does happen to be my taste. But I do often wonder how much of that is conditioning because I remember growing up and watching movies where the heroes are always dudes and they're always heroic because they're doing doodly things like using swords and knives and guns and running around punching people. And so constantly seeing that image of a man slaying a dragon, of a man being a vigilante, of a man punching the bad guy in the face, and you're like, oh, like... He's the one that has the most agency and he's handling situations through violence. So the one who's the mover and the shaker here, who's the hero here, is the dude and he's doing it by being aggressive and violent. So if you see that enough, you're going to look at that and be like, okay, so strength means violence and to be strong and violent, you got to be a dude because otherwise you're a damsel. And then we moved into, okay, you're not a damsel. Now the women are also punching. Now the women are also slaying dragons, which is great. It's definitely better than them not doing those things. But there are other kinds of power. It's not always about punching people, which it feels weird for me to say that because I do really like stories about that. And again, I, I mean, it is taste, but it's also, I think, conditioning. That isn't always the solution to punch someone, <laughs> even though it feels like it should be the solution sometimes. But so when I went to see Lainey Taylor um, for her signing for Music Nightmares, um, and this was, she pointed this out about her own story, which is something that when she said it, I was like, I, how did I not notice that? But it was so true and I loved it. Even, I mean, I already loved the story. Um, but she had said she had just finished writing the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy where there is a lot of war and battle and stuff like that. And you know, that's fine. And she enjoyed writing it and it's great. But in writing Strange the Dreamer and in writing that duology, she was like, she said she didn't want to write a story where punching someone is the solution, where violence is the answer, where war will solve your problems. She was like, sometimes that won't solve your problems. And what do you do then? What do you do when violence will not solve your problems? You have to find another way. You have to compromise or you have to go through diplomacy. You have to do something else. You can't always just kill somebody. And that is really at the heart of the Strange the Dreamer duology, if you've read it, which I do love. And I love the, that that this story explores something in a way that is interesting and exciting and you read it and you're not like, oh, how boring. Like they're sitting in board meetings going through the diplomatic process. 
but where where violence isn't the answer where you can't just be a strong female character and just come in there and like just cut some throats take some names wham bam thank you ma'am and we uh we killed the bad guy yay us save the day sometimes that's not Sometimes killing the bad guy will not solve your problems. So there's there's subtlety and there's intelligence in other solutions and other ways of doing things. And I love that about the story. When she pointed it out, I was like, I never thought of it in those terms before. But now that you're pointing it out to me, I see what you mean. And I wholeheartedly agree that we don't see enough of that in stories like this. It's always either you're weak and you have no agency or you're killing people attacking people, going to war. And I do love stories about attacking people, killing people, and going to war. I do. I really do. But there are other kinds of strength. And a story, I think, in my mind, will only be stronger. I shouldn't use the word strong. Will be a better story. Will be a more interesting story if there's more to it. If it isn't just about killing people, that can be part of it. And I will love that part of it. But I I bring up Leigh Bardugo all the time. But she writes about a bunch of criminals in the Six of Crows duology, but the things that they're doing aren't always violent. Sometimes they're tricksy. Sometimes they're using their brains. Sometimes they're making deals, making compromises, negotiating, coming up with other solutions. Sometimes you have to find a way to work with your enemy instead of working against them because that's the only way to get something done. And that's a way more interesting story. I love the parts with the, the guns and the violence and the killing and the stabbing and we all know. My last video was a thumbnail of me covered in fake blood. But um, it's a more interesting story for the fact that there isn't just that. It's not just like show up, shoot them, and leave. So that's a bigger problem than just strong female characters. But that's why I object to this emphasis on strong female characters. How about we just have good female characters? How about we just have... And then, okay, well, I don't want to call it that either because that's a whole other thing to unpack is the representations of of what is goodness and virtue and all of that. Maybe I'll do a whole other video on that. But females should be represented and represented well. But the whole spectrum should be represented, as it is with dudes. Which is why you'll never hear someone say, I love this book because it has such strong male characters. It's just, people will just say it's a good book. And if you say it's a good book, then people will tend to assume that the characters in it are well written. I would say, hold up a book and say, this is a good book. And it features a lot of women characters. And to me, the natural conclusion after those two statements is that they are well-written female characters. Otherwise, that wouldn't be a good book. So yeah, I think my rant is over. Can't think of anything else to say. Let me know in the comments down below why I'm wrong. Or why I'm right. I like that too. Um, Oh yeah, I keep meaning to add this to my videos. I post videos on Saturdays. I can now say that. Because I kind of started doing that at the beginning of this year. And then I was like, let's see how that goes. And I've been pretty consistent about posting videos on Saturdays. So now I can finally add that to my outro. Please like and subscribe. I post videos on Saturdays. There you go. I'll try to remember to say that next time too. Watch, now that I've said it, I'll never post on a Saturday again. Let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> Your thoughts on this issue, on this subject. If you get what I'm saying. Do also let me know if you don't get what I'm saying at all. If you think I'm totally wrong, you know, let me know as usual. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about why I hate female. Nope, that's not what I'm here to talk about. Okay, let's try that again.